Alright, what's up everybody? Welcome back to yet another video. So today we're going to talk a little business. And not necessarily a video I want to make. Um, and by the title, things may seem like they're worse than what they are. But um, it's starting to affect me mentally. And um, I just kind of want to address that. So, the, you know, the title of the video is I may be shutting my business down at the end of 2023. What do I mean by that? Well, the transportation side of everything that I do, so I have two separate sides. I've got the actual transport side, which I have two current owner operators working under me. And then I have the brokerage side, where I am the middleman for moving freight or cars, which I move 99% cars at this point. But So I have two separate sides. So the transport side is me and two other owner operators, three people. One owner operator moving cars, one owner operator moving freight. And I am at the point where I'm looking to expand. Everybody wants to expand and everybody wants to do different things, but you see the way some people expand that haven't worked out. I want to move in the right way. Uh, so I've been looking, for, I've, I'm always looking for owner operators. But the sad thing of it is, is. 99, I would say 1 out of 100 owner-operators that comes about is ready to work or is, you know, weeks away from ready to work. Um, it's I get addressed with people who don't have the equipment yet, and that's fine. I get that. But it's like, what's the time process? Like, how quickly can you get to work? Um, and you know we go through that whole conversation and then it comes out to it's it never really turns out to anything so it's like one percent of owner operators that I talk to work out and it's either they get work for somebody else because they know somebody which is fine I don't care that's not um, you know I'm not gonna stop somebody from going to make money but it's I'm to the point where I need more help because I'm getting more opportunities and I'm not capitalizing on those opportunities if that makes sense. So that's like one of the points is just not having enough help as far as owner operators. So we're going to circle back to what I just said about getting reached out to about moving more things. We're going to circle back to that so hold on to that thought. Number two is if I can't get owner operators company drivers sounds great doesn't it being in full control uh, and my my philosophy is if I were to buy trucks and trailers and convert people or not when they convert them but if they were they wanted to be an owner operator and give them a chance to to get their foot in the door um, it would be making them a company driver. Now my company drivers, the what I was kind of thinking of would just be based, paid based on all miles. So if they're running loaded or empty, you're still getting paid, you're getting bonuses for certain things, tarping, other things like that. But to entice somebody to want to run hard, you know, pay them all miles instead of, you know, percentage based on loads. But I go out and buy a lot of equipment. Equipment's not cheap. Equipment's expensive. And I go out and buy, you know, some not maybe brand new, maybe not brand new, maybe close to brand new equipment. And um, is someone going to treat it like, like it's their own and take care of it and be able to, you know, put the time and effort into keeping that vehicle as clean as possible you know if they're out on the road for a while making sure it's DOT compliant and if it's not let me know so I can get it up to snuff whether it be paying a shop or if it comes back home we can take care of that um, but really when it comes down to it no one's going to take care of your equipment like they take care of if it was their own equipment and they were paying the note on it so that that would be one solution would be to say you know forget adding owner adding owner operators it would just be adding company drivers and that's a choice it's just finding the right help and you guys know the way the the economy and the world is right now finding good help is it, it's hard to come by 
and I really you, I'm not gonna look that hard to to fill a spot that I could just do without if I had to you know what I mean so we're gonna circle back to what I was saying earlier is um, with direct customers I have a few direct customers yes I get texts I get calls every day but I can't keep them and I can't gain more if I don't have the resources to take care of them when it comes down to it I'm only one person you know I'm I'm getting ready to head back out on the road uh, what's today today's Saturday on Monday myself I'll be gone a couple nights and I'm tied up for the week I'm already committed to the week if I get a phone call or a text or whatever it may be email and someone needs something within the next couple days there's no way I'm gonna be able to get to it with sorry so pretty important important phone call to take there when you see somebody's name on your phone you're like uh, why are they calling on a Saturday sometimes you take that anyways what I was saying was when you have direct customers or potential direct customers and you're not available they're just going to go find someone else so you're going to end up losing those direct customers and some customers understand that you may not be able to get it that day or within a day or two but you got to be able to get it within that same week or they're just going to have to go find someone else or they're going to have to go get it themselves or whatever it may be and if that happens once maybe they give you a shot again maybe they don't you could potentially lose them it's just not having anybody available and then when that when that kinda comes up I, my thought is if I had more company drivers I could not force but I could push them to where I need them to be to get the you know take care of direct customer freight but when it comes to things like owner operators you know it's kinda working on a different um, I say like a different schedule because an owner operator owns all of their equipment they're just running under your authority and your insurance so they have what's in their best interest as far as how much they can make in a week as where a company driver as long as they're getting paid for the miles they're still making money and it's like then it's then it comes down to if it's feasible for me if I'm gonna make any money as the owner of the equipment and sometimes on some of those jobs to to take care of a direct customer you'll have to maybe lose a couple bucks but as business goes you keep getting more business from that person and in the, in the you know in the long run it all works out you end up making 10x what you should have with that customer like some of my worst customers or worst experiences for customers on the first try um, whether it be like a miscommunication, an equipment issue, um, a pickup or delivery issue, once you get past that first one and they see what you've gone through, either going out of their way to get the thing, getting a driver there quickly, it just like it just keeps going up and up and everything turns out to be like flawless with that customer and it's all automated and that's the type of customers you want. But um, not that I would completely shut down the trucking side um, at the end of this year but it may be a point where I take a step back because I can't be on the road 24 7 you can't be on the road 24 7 and grow a business like this you need to have time in the office you need to have time where you're behind the computer or on the phone and you're not behind the steering wheel and you can get things done so what happens next I guess we'll see but um, I thank you guys for tuning in because it's. I'm going to share the journey here on YouTube. And uh, we're just going to see what happens. So thanks guys for watching. We'll see you on the next one.